the lives of Neanderthal children were largely a mystery up until fairly recently. But over the past two or three decades, a revolution in archaeology has begun to reveal intimate details about even the smallest of them. Children's fossilized bones are among the Neanderthal remains that are being found in increasing numbers. Now, we are learning previously unheard of details about what it was like to be a young Neanderthal. To determine whether there are variations between Neanderthal and Sapiens growth, scientists have examined the fossilized skeletons of Neanderthals. Researchers have known for a long time that modern humans mature slowly. In accordance with recent studies, that have revealed subtle variations in the brain maturation and developmental genes in Neanderthals and Homo sapiens, the new information suggests that Neanderthal children may have reached adulthood a few years earlier than modern human children do. The Devil's Tower Boy was discovered in Gibraltar in 1926, passed away at the age of only five, possibly from skull fractures. But he had already experienced another severe incident earlier in life, his jaw had been broken when he was a young child. It's impossible to determine how these wounds developed, but it's clear that a Neanderthal childhood could be risky. Long ago, deep in the rugged terrain of the Teshiktash cave in what is now modern-day Uzbekistan, a Neanderthal child named Tek was born. Tek's birth brought great joy to the small Neanderthal community that resided within the cave. His arrival signified hope and the continuation of their ancient lineage. Teshiktash was discovered in 1938 in southern Uzbekistan. He was between the ages of 8 and 11 years old. He was carefully laid to rest, buried in a shallow pit with five pairs of Siberian ibex horns placed around the perimeter of the grave surrounding the his head. The ancient cave walls seemed to embrace his spirit as the Neanderthals bid their final farewells. The skull is believed to date from the Middle Paleolithic, 70,000 years ago, based on the archaeology, fauna, and skeleton itself. 150 pieces of bone were used to reconstruct the skull of the Teshiktash. The numerous sediment layers that were on top of the skull caused it to be crushed. The Teshiktash skull underwent DNA testing, which established that it was a Neanderthal skull. Further genetic studies revealed that early Neanderthals along the Mediterranean and Northwest European Neanderthals were somewhat separated from Near Eastern Neanderthals. Consistently low levels of gene flow between Neanderthals and modern humans in the Near East provide support for this information. The skull was noticeably larger than the skull of a similarly aged modern child. Archaeologists hypothesized that this resulted from Neanderthals' faster rate of growth than adolescent modern Homo sapiens. The larger, taller skull is characterized by features common to Neanderthals, including an occipital bun, an oval foramen magnum shovel-shaped incisors, a supraorbital ridge, and the absence of a robust chin. The skull was said to have additional characteristics that distinguished modern humans from Neanderthals. Researchers began to doubt the classification as a result of the skull's morphological characteristics, with some arguing that it was more morphologically similar to Upper Paleolithic Homo sapiens. Neanderthals developed their teeth earlier than modern humans to support their more rapid growth, to support brain development. Indeed, Neanderthals may have been able to eat solid foods months before our own ancestors, which would have given them the ability to survive in the harsh Pleistocene environment. Despite the smaller, more delicate bones, there are many Neanderthal children's remains to study. Neanderthal infant skeletons initially made it seem as though their early development was remarkably similar to that of modern babies. Anatomical features that can only be seen with extreme magnification have yet more subtle differences. However, the question of whether Neanderthals also had human-like physical characteristics has been up for debate for many years. Archaeologists are currently acquiring a previously unheard of portrait of Neanderthals thanks to a variety of scientific techniques. The offspring of these close relatives of our own species represent one of the biggest changes in understanding. It's interesting to note that, despite the fact that Neanderthal heads grew slightly faster and had different shapes, their brains appear to have developed similarly. According to the findings of another article, both species regulate their growth in different ways to adjust their energy consumption to their physical characteristics. Understanding the growth patterns of Neanderthals and modern humans allows us to more clearly define our own past. Because modern humans and Neanderthals shared a recent ancestor, they both experienced similar rates of overall growth. This Neanderthal child compares to a contemporary child using pediatric growth assessment techniques. The anatomical shape of Neanderthals may have been influenced by energy limitations during development, 
the pattern of vertebral maturation, and brain growth. The cranium of Neanderthals was larger than that of the modern human race. Adult Neanderthals had an intracranial volume of 1,520 cubic centimeters, compared to 1,195 for modern adult men. At the time of his death, the Neanderthal child in the study had 1,330 cubic centimeters, or 87.5% of the total he had attained at the age of 8. The modern child's cranial capacity has already fully developed by the time they reach that age. Because growing a large brain requires a lot of energy, other body parts can't grow as quickly as they should. The rest of the body takes longer to develop in sapiens because the brain requires a lot of energy to develop during childhood. Brain size reduction in modern humans over the past 40,000 years is a well-documented fact. Some hypothesize that growing smaller but similarly efficient brains might have represented an energetic advantage, which paid off in faster reproductive rates in modern compared to Pleistocene people. Reducing brain size thus might represent an evolutionary advantage. Indeed, modern brain anatomical growth has an unusually high energy cost, particularly during breastfeeding and infancy, and this appears to call for a slowing of body growth. This young Neanderthal's growth and development are consistent with human ontogeny, which involves slow anatomical growth between weaning and puberty. This might make up for the enormous energy expenditure required to develop a brain that size. In actuality, the skeleton and dentition of this Neanderthal exhibit a physiology that is comparable to that of a sapiens of the same age, with the exception of the thorax region, which is less developed and corresponds to a child between 5 and 6 years old. Our Neanderthal child's growth wasn't complete, most likely as a result of energy conservation. An 8-year-old Neanderthal who served as the study's main subject would have been nearly 4 feet tall, and weigh 57 pounds at the time of death. The child's canine teeth and the strength of the bones indicated that it was a male, even though the genetic analyses were unable to determine the child's sex. The researchers were able to prove that our main character was right hand and capable of adult tasks, including using his teeth as a third hand to manipulate plant fibers and animal skins. The child protagonist of this investigation had a younger brother, and they also knew who his mother was. His skull, though, is a little different from contemporary craniums. His brain size was about 88% of the average Neanderthal adults, lacking roughly a baseball's worth of volume, and the inner surface of the skull shows signs that the bone may have felt pressure from a growing brain. According to the researchers, this discrepancy suggests that the boy's brain was still developing. If this is the case, his brain's growth may have been slower than that of modern humans, whose brains are finished developing by the time they are seven. The majority of the boy's skeleton, which was discovered in northern Spain 50,000 years ago, indicates that he was about nine years old when he passed away, but some of his bones and teeth appear less developed. It is a good reminder that Neanderthals also grew up at varying rates. Indeed, Neanderthal infants matured more quickly than their human counterparts in order to support their developing brains. Neanderthal teeth emerged up to four months earlier than those of modern humans, according to researchers studying fossils. They contend that doing so would enable them to begin consuming a wider variety of foods, and provide them with the energy needed to support an early growth spurt. It is widely debated how quickly human teeth developed compared to those of Neanderthals. While some claim that the latter mature more quickly, others counter that they are within the normal range of human variation. For the first time, we have a baby Neanderthal tooth whose root growth allows us to determine whether or not the tooth first broke through the gum line. The baby teeth appeared to be erupting earlier than in modern humans, and the teeth appear to be growing more quickly. You can learn a lot about a person from their teeth. Forensic scientists can use them to help identify remains. They are a good candidate for fossilization due to their high mineral content, which enables researchers to glean information about the distant past. While fossils can also show how past environments may have changed over time, some extinct animals, like sharks, are only known from the teeth they left behind. In this study, the researchers examined how Neanderthals grew during the earliest stage of their development using deciduous, or baby, teeth discovered at the site. The imaging revealed that while molars grew at a similar rate but formed enamel more quickly, certain teeth, such as the incisor, grew much more quickly than those of modern humans. Overall, compared to modern Europeans, Neanderthal teeth began to emerge from the jaw about three months earlier. 
these historical teeth can be used to make assumptions about how development may have changed. Our developmental history is recorded in our teeth. Even adult teeth, which appear between the ages of 20 and 30, tell us a lot about when you were growing. But baby teeth start to erupt before birth and during the first three years of life, so they can provide a little more information. Previous studies have shown a correlation between tooth development and brain growth in modern humans, other hominids, and non-human primates like chimpanzees. Scientists can estimate how quickly teeth had grown and emerged by scanning the interior of the teeth, but these processes are still difficult to understand. Even though tooth development and eruption are two distinct processes, they occur simultaneously. Despite the fact that every child in the world has experienced it, the theory is quite complex, and scientists still don't fully grasp it. It is known that Neanderthals consumed a variety of foods, including a lot of red meat, seafood, plants, and mushrooms. Nonetheless, this early emergence of teeth suggests that Neanderthals moved toward eating a variety of solid foods, and were weaned off their mother's milk after birth more quickly than Homo sapiens. This is consistent with earlier research that suggested that young Neanderthals were weaned at around four months old, roughly two months earlier than most humans. Given that Neanderthal craniums were significantly larger than those of modern humans, the extra energy this would provide would allow the energy requirements of the developing brain to be met. These diminished over time, just like they did for our ancestors. Nevertheless, the results point to Neanderthals growing quickly, but the debate over the species' rate of development is unlikely to be settled anytime soon. The Neanderthals, our ancient evolutionary cousins, seem to have adhered to the philosophy of live fast, die young, and have a good-looking corpse. In fact, it is estimated that 85% of the species perished by the age of 40, necessitating early development. Live fast, die young, and have a good-looking corpse.